In this video, we're going to look at magnets and talk about a technique known as the right hand rule that will help us identify the direction of a magnetic field. First, uh, we need to know how magnets interact. It's possible that you have had experience with this before. If you've heard this terminology of a magnet having a north pole and a south pole. Well, very similar to electrostatic charges where opposites attract and like charges repel, here opposite poles will attract each other and like poles will repel. So if you have north and south, they attract. South to south, they repel, or north to north, they repel. Um, and this is a really useful uh, thing when we talk about especially these permanent magnets. Uh, sometimes having a function that they attract each other is useful, and sometimes having a function that they repel each other is useful. Now, there has always been this constant search for something called a monopole magnet. But the reality is, as far as we know, nature doesn't allow a monopole magnet. These poles cannot be isolated. So say you have a, a magnet here with a north pole and a south pole, and you cut it in half. Well, one might think like, oh, if it got it straight down the middle, you'd have a north pole side and a south pole side um, as separate pieces. But instead, when you cut it in half, what you do is you actually create two different magnets. Um, now, the orientation stays the same. The north pole stays where it was, but it then forms a new south pole. So any technique or strategy to create this monopole magnet has always been proven ineffective. Um, there are lots of cool applications that could be done if this was ever possible, but as far as we know, it is not. Every magnet will have a North Pole and a South Pole to it. When we talk about a magnet, specifically a permanent magnet, the kind that you're probably thinking about right now, like a magnet that's on your fridge, um, is made up of a microscopic bunch of little magnets, basically. You have something like an iron nail, and you could actually magnetize that. You could turn an iron nail, which typically isn't magnetic, into something that is magnetic. Inside an iron nail has a bunch of little magnetic domains, is what we call it. And those domains, they are not aligned. They are all facing in different directions. But it is possible to align those domains. If you pass it through a strong enough magnetic field, you can force those domains to line up and all face the same direction. Once you've done that, you have magnetized that material, and a magnetized nail would be able to pick up paper clips or something like that. Um, and you do that by aligning all of these domains. So a permanent magnet has domains that look something like this in the bottom picture. And say we take that permanent magnet and we want to draw what the magnetic field looks like around it. Well, we've already looked at an electrostatic field or a gravitational field. And we saw how the arrows, the vector field points. For an electrostatic field, we pointed away from positive and toward negative. For gravitational field, we're always pointing towards the massive object. For a magnetic field, our rule is that the magnetic field lines will always point from north to south. Um, so what it will look like here is we'll see a magnetic field kind of grow out, kind of curling out from the North Pole to the South Pole here in this bar magnet with one side north and one side south. And it's possible you've seen a picture that looks something like this before. Um, this is a pretty classic magnetic field orientation. And we'll see some more examples like that later on. But a key point here is what this is telling you is essentially the direction that a compass would point if it was placed in that spot. So say you were to point, put a compass up here on this field line. Well, it would align itself to go directly with, trying to go the same way, directly with that field line um, pointing from the north to the south. We call this magnetic field, we actually give it a symbol, a capital B. Sometimes we call it the B field. B in this case stands for magnetic field strength. This is analogous to when we talked about electric field strength or gravitational field strength. This is the strength of the magnetic field. Our units for magnetic field might sound familiar to you. Uh, they are Tesla. You might not have used them as a unit, but you've certainly heard that word before. Uh, we talk about magnetic field strength in units of Tesla, a capital T. And just to be clear, that has been around a lot longer than Tesla, the car company. Uh, Tesla is named after Nikola Tesla, um, the famous inventor, scientist, uh, that did a lot of experiments with electricity, magnetism, and such. Now, you don't have to have a magnet that's a straight line, what we call a bar magnet there, with a north on one side and a south on the other. Uh, if you ever watched a cartoon, like an old school cartoon, you've probably seen a magnet that looks like this. 
a horseshoe magnet. Um, horseshoe magnet, the rules still apply. Basically, the way it works is one side of that horseshoe is a north and the other side is a south. It's just a bar magnet that's bent in half. And we're still going to see a magnetic field form pointing from north to south. But here we will see it more concentrated because now you have a closer um, location that the north and south are right next to each other. And the earth itself is also a magnet, which you might be aware of. That's why a compass works to point in the direction that we want. And earth's magnetic field is set up a little differently than you might be thinking. Um, we know of earth's geographical north pole and geographical south pole. Well, it turns out if you look at it as a magnet, our North Pole is actually a magnetic South Pole. Um, and what that does is it means that the North Seeking Compass is pointing towards the South Pole. North is attracted to that South Pole. And we often call it still magnetic North. Um, and it's almost where the North Pole of our planet is, is actually drifting. Um, you can see maps of how it has changed over time. And that little magnetic north pole kind of moves around and is not exactly in the same place all the time. And it's certainly not at the geographic north pole. So anything that uses a compass for navigation has to factor that in if it needs to be really, really precise in its navigation techniques. Sorry, Bill. Moving ahead. All right. The last part that we need to really focus on here is how all of this ties in to something called the right hand rule. Well, something that we're going to get into a lot, especially later on in this unit, is that if you have a current carrying wire, so you you send a current through a wire, you can actually create a magnetic field around that wire. You can create a little magnet using electricity. And this is a pretty awesome power. Um, well, the magnetic field, as we said, points from north to south. But around a wire, there isn't an easy north and south pole that we're showing. So the way that we draw our magnetic field around a wire is using the right hand rule. So imagine that you have your right hand and you are grabbing onto that wire where your thumb is pointing in the direction of the uh, current in the wire your fingers wrap around the wire in the same orientation as the magnetic field. It's like they're vectors pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. And we draw usually as these concentric circles that are going around that wire. Now, this can be kind of tricky because it requires us to draw in 3D. It's pretty easy to draw a vector if it's going in some direction that you can see pointed on a piece of paper or on a slide. Um, but it's pretty hard, something that we haven't done yet, is draw a vector that's coming straight at you or coming away from you or toward you. Um, we do have techniques to do this, though. One way that I like to remember this technique is to think of like an arrow, like bow and arrow. Imagine that that arrow is coming, um, coming at you or going away from you. We're going to draw essentially that arrow. If it is something that's going into the paper, so something that's moving away from you, we are going to imagine that the arrow is moving away from you as well. And you see basically the feathers of the arrow as they move away. We are going to draw a vector that's into the paper. So like directly into the paper as an X. It's like the fletching, the, the little feathers on the back of that arrow. If something is coming out of the paper, so as a vector coming straight at you, we are going to draw that as a dot. Sometimes we'll draw... Uh, this X kind of circumscribed by a circle or maybe a dot in the middle of a circle as well. Uh, but into the paper will be an X, out of the paper or out of the screen will be a dot. Now we can draw magnetic fields this way. So imagine you have this wire that's moving upward. Uh, you can draw your, or imagine grabbing onto it where your thumb is in the direction of the current and your fingers wrap around. Well, they come out of the board on the left side here, and they go into the board on the right side, or out of the screen, into the screen, out of the paper, into the paper. But notice here how these are drawn. They are not drawn in this uniform field, just like we saw with gravity or with electrostatic charges. The closer you are to the thing that creates the field, the stronger that field is. Here we are recording that by 
di density. We call it the magnetic flux density, and it's highest at closer to this wire. So you'll notice if you have a compass next to any wire that has a current going through it, you might disorient that compass. It might not be able to point to magnetic uh, to the magnetic north pole uh, anymore because you have some other magnetic field being produced next to that compass starting to make it go in other directions. So let's look at some examples here. You should be able to draw in a magnetic field given a current carrying wire. And here's all four different um, straight possibilities that you can see going to the right, going to the left, up or down, at least drawn on a piece of paper. I suppose you could have the current coming out of the page or going into the page, and we'll see that in a minute. So if you have this current carrying wire moving to the right, um, here is how we'll draw that in there, just so you don't have to see me trying to, to make that same shape with my hand. Um, and we see that drawn in here where the fingers wrap around kind of from the top to the bottom. A couple different ways that we could draw that. We could draw those swooping vectors showing them curling over the wire, just like we have our fingers curling over. Or we could draw dots on the top and X's on the bottom, showing that it comes out of the screen on the top and into the screen on the bottom. Now, if we look at this arrow down below, the current is going to the left. If we grab that wire, thumb pointing to the left, our fingers wrap around where it's coming out of the board into the board or out of the screen, into the screen, out on the bottom, in on the top. Um, going straight up here, we're gonna see our fingers wrap around from the left to the right. So out on the left, in on the right, and then current going down, my fingers are coming out on the right, in on the left. Now you could draw this swoop going this direction or curling the other way as long as you have it drawing I recommend drawing it over the wire um, so you don't have to worry about trying to make it go under the wire and figure all of that. So this is the right hand rule. Notice I've labeled it right hand rule number one. In the next lesson, we're going to look at right hand rule number two. There are a couple different variations uh, that can be used for different applications. So this is finding the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. It's the one that we're going to be curling our fingers with. Well. If we have a straight wire, we saw that that magnetic field was pretty uniform. It, it um, degraded as we got farther away, but it was pretty constant on either side. If we loop a wire, so put a little bend in that wire, notice how we can concentrate the magnetic field on the inside of the loop and dissipate that magnetic field on the outside of the loop. Uh, we still have the same amount of overall magnetic field, it's just in a tighter space on the inside of that bend. And we can use this to our advantage if we just keep looping. So maybe you've heard of an electromagnet. Basically all an electromagnet is, is taking a wire and then wrapping it in a coil. So here we'll often see it drawn or wrapped around something like an iron nail um, or some sort of core that can uh, maintain that magnetic field and kind of concentrate it. And the way that this works is when we have this wire, uh, imagine here, if you will, that this drawing is like a cross section of that coil, where these blue circles are kind of the, the cut wire where it would come out of the screen and then go back into the screen in this loop, out of the screen, back into the screen, out, in, out, in, out, in, and then away. So we can use our right hand rule here. Uh, it's coming down, down the wire. Sorry, I can't figure out how to point in the right direction. Coming down the wire. And then your thumb would be pointing out of the screen and then it'd be pointing into the screen, out of the screen, into the screen until eventually it comes out the other side. Well, I can draw the magnetic field around this. Again, here, this wire, the current is coming out of the screen, which means that my fingers, if I had my thumb facing directly at me, um, my fingers would be wrapping around here counterclockwise. If I go around to the other side after it gets cut here, comes back around, my finger, my thumb is going to be pointing into the screen, which means that my magnetic field is still going to be going um, counterclockwise here around. No, in that case, it's going clockwise, sorry. And then out of the screen will be counterclockwise and so on. Um, and we see this pattern hold true. And you could do that same thing with your thumb in and out the whole time. 
But what you'll notice here is that on the inside of this coil, it's always going up. On the outside of the coil, it's always going down. But as we said before, if we loop a wire on the inside of that loop, we have magnified, amplified that magnetic field, and we create this strong magnetic field down the wire or down the center of that coil, which turns this into a strong electromagnet. We can basically create a magnet that we're able to turn on and off using the same principle that we saw one single wire making this kind of effect. And here's another couple pictures showing that same thing. That magnetic field doesn't only exist inside the coil. It then is turned into a magnet, basically. So it goes from north to south, just like we saw with the bar magnet. It's just another way of getting that field to be produced. But notice, obviously, it's the densest here in the center. That's where that magnetic field is concentrated. And electromagnets have all sorts of applications. Maybe you've been to an amusement park where it has a roller coaster that is accelerated uh, from zero to 60 very, very quickly without going up a hill or being lifted by any sort of chain. That uses electromagnets, either attracting or repelling at just the right times to do that. Um, here, a maglev train could use electromagnets to uh, determine exactly how much to uh, repel or attract the train to get it to just the right spot. Um, some door closers you might see out in the hallways um, that these are electromagnets that can be turned off and close the doors all over the building if there's ever so some sort of drill or fire alarm um, that goes off that the doors need to close. Um, there's lots of different applications that electromagnets hold. So we will be continuing to see different applications, especially talking about this more when we look at how we can manipulate these magnetic fields and then produce things that we that we care about, something like a speaker or a motor. Um, all of this uses the same sort of functions of magnetic fields and wires creating their own magnetic fields.